Welcome. Good evening to everybody. Um, it's good to see everybody tonight. And I'm excited because Amen. I know that the Lord is here and the Holy Spirit is uh, I've been guiding us through the week. Um, always uh, humble by the, the thought that you and I are always So when we gather together as a family of believers, uh, it's fun to pray together like that. So let's begin with the word of prayer uh, before we uh, worship together. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing, amazing love for us. Thank you for your grace. <coughs>
so as you set up, uh, Brother Ding, would you come down and uh, he will give us uh, his story and his testimony and then also give a song. So while we do our giving, um, but then later on, after that, we'll do the message. And then after the message, uh, let's all stay. And, and if God is in touch and you're ready to share your stories, and you'll do that too. So there's no rush after that. Come on, So thankful that Sister Claire brought me here. Amen. 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 <laughs> and it's so so scary to stand here because you know it's, it's, it's only by the grace of God that, that I could say. And, uh, God has given me this gift. And before I became a Christian, I I I loved music before I became a Christian. And the one song that we sing, I I, I love it. No turning back. Yeah. Uh, I was miraculously healed by the Lord. Uh, I got sick last March and uh, I was bedridden for 12 days. And my, it started with a kidney infection because I went to Philippines for vacation. And then I end up here and my kidneys shoot up to stage four. Is a group, uh, they call it a chronic kidney. One more stage, and I it will be like stage five. They put me on the eighth floor for kidney transplant. Right away, they did the biopsy on me. I look like I, I had a lot of tests. I, I feel like I'm dying. And they, they put me to dialysis right away wow. because they said, uh, we get up, we're gonna clean up your blood right away. So it's hard, it's hard if you are, if your blood will go to the machine and then it will yeah. come back to you. They put me a catheter here. They open, they, they, they put something on my back also, uh, like a little cell, they took a little cell. They did a biopsy. And now that I'm miraculously healed, I hear the voice of the Lord when I was bedridden and then and, and, and the Lord said, uh, you know what, I discipline you. Mm. And sometimes discipline is, 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 is very hard, but it's, it's love. Mm. Because if the Lord did not disi didn't discipline me, I will be the same, same kind of person. Yeah. Wow. Because even though you are a Christian, sometimes you are in the middle like a lukewarm, like a lukewarm yeah. that says in Revelation. The reason I said that is because the passion that I have in music is always there. So the Lord don't like that. Mm. The, the Lord is saying that if you are mine, you are mine. You cannot be like two places. Mm. Like you, you are here and then you are there. So I, I, I had a group in New York and I just separate from them because the Lord said, separate unto me. And then when I come here, I'm the only one here, I'm lonely, but, but God is with me because, because the Lord said, before Abraham was, I am. So I cannot say I am alone because I am, before I speak myself, the I am is there. I am alone, I am not alone because I am is there. I am not alone. So I'm, I'm, I take up with this song. And when I got healed, the verse that remind me is the doubter Thomas. When, when, when the disciples said, uh, we saw the Lord, he was resurrected. But he, he didn't believe that he was resurrected. And he said, no, I don't believe unless I, 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 I saw the, the, 
the holes on his finger, and I put my finger there, then I believe, and then the next day, the Lord show up. It's the same thing with me. When, when, when I was in dialysis, and the doctor is passing by, like one month that I've been in dialysis three times a week, the last day, doctor said, oh, I don't know, because this is your last day. The first thing that I remember is when, when Thomas laid down, oh, Lord of my God, my Lord and my God, because he don't believe. Now, the Lord proves to me that he can do it. Amen. So then, ah, Lord, thank you <laughs> for this time. <laughs> this is the song that God has given me.
every topic and song is to say, brother, I trust the Lord that God that has put you and brought you here, not by accident. Amen. Amen. No accident with Jesus. How many? How many of you can say and raise your hands in there? Although there are moments we say, okay, <laughs> this cannot be happening, right? This is not part of my plan. But tell you what, that that song just. By the way, brother, is that original? Yeah. That's yeah. you wrote that song, right? Composed. You composed it. Yeah, I did. Cool. There you go. So I, I was gonna say I didn't wanna. So imagine the the experience and the, the, the tragedy and all those that that he God has used that and taken all that. And out of that, God brought this song in his life that you and I get to witness and get to see. So brother, you are not done yet. And you will there's a reason why you're here. So we are praying for your family. We're praying for you. That the Lord will perfect segue to what we're going to be talking about today. Our topic today is the Jesus way. Amen. I'm not really big in titles and stuff, but <laughs> the reason why God just kind of put this in my heart, I said, Lord, we're done with the voices and stuff. My prayer is that you and I kind of getting the, the groove. I was like, okay, I know that was Jesus. Okay, that's, you're not Jesus, so I'm going to tune you down, right? Um, oh, this one is Jesus. I'm going to tune you up a little bit. Oh, this is this is kind of too loud and too crazy in my life, so I'm going to go step back a little bit so then I can actually hear and see Jesus. Now, we have seen this for those of us who have been in the faith, especially all those who have been in the faith, that sometimes and most of the times our way is not really good. Because if it is, would you agree? Jesus would have not come down and just left. Let through, you know, from heaven, he would say, that church is great. I'm going to let him do it. But because of his goodness and his love for the church, because he promised that the church is what? It's going to be victorious. That the church is that the, the enemy and then the gates of hell will not even Perfect. come against yes. nor prevail in our church, right? Amen. That he says that our church will be. That to say is his way is always better. Amen? His way is always perfect. Amen. But there are times that his way has been replaced by, by your way and mine. And so what we're going to be talking about in the next couple of days is going back on track to Jesus' way. Amen? All right, so we're going to, so if you have your Bibles with you, um, open it to Philippians chapter 1. There you go, the Jesus way. Now, I, I tell you, it's been a year, and we are actually uh, hitting the second year with you. And I can tell you that I have seen so much growth and change my life personally and in your life. Uh, so if you're coming here and you're like, well, this is 2024 now, I don't feel I don't feel like I've changed. Rebuke that in Jesus' name. I have seen your changes and you you literally committing to the stuff that we're doing. So the reason why this is so important that if we want our church to grow, we're gonna have a little bit of that experience of, of Brother Dave's singing. Amen? Now, I'm not saying that all of us should be in that situation. But boy, golly, I am thankful that you have shared that music to us. Amen? Amen. Um, just the lyrics, it's so simple, and yet we can feel the gratitude. We can feel how thankful you are to Jesus, and you're just ready to go. And so my prayer today is that as we continue, as we look into Pauline's letter, as he, um, as we've been encouraged with his words. My prayer to you is that you keep wherever you are. You stay wherever you are and keep going and we keep going as a church. Amen? Amen. So a couple of things before we realize that our church is healthy. Any ideas? Say it out loud. If I ask you what makes a healthy church? Being, being obedient to the word of God. 
Being obedient to the word of God. Amen. What Teamwork. else? Teamwork makes the dream work. That, sorry, I had to say that because in my brain. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's like a kid, right? That's good. Teamwork. What else? Because teamwork behind that, there's unity, right? There, there is that unity that, hey, we got to go do this. This is the task in front of us. So what else? The fruit. The fruit, which is the result of what, you know, if we are meeting together and we're all the same people, we're like, let's just stop meeting together. We're not doing that because, you know, God is gracious and God loves you and me. He loves you enough that he say, hey, stay within this track. What else? A good good leadership. A prayer for church. Good, good. Good leadership. Good leadership. Not always the case, but good leadership. <laughs> you know, um, so I'm going to go share with you a couple things. So a healthy church is uh, is marked by, by healthy. Read, read me. Can you read it with me? So I, I, I didn't get a chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> I started days just like, I should have. But I will read it with you or to you. It says, a healthy church is marked by healthy relationship among the members and between the members and their leaders a church is a relational network all right now how many of you are excited that our church is not only meeting together so we can eat bread so we can so we can see each other and hug and high five and say, thank you Lord. It's good seeing you here it is actually a hub a place, a grooming place, so a relationship can be what? Spread outside, amen? Meaning as I see your beautiful faces and as you take showers and put gels and you look beautiful and whatnot, I know we, without, the, without a shadow of a doubt, that when you go out in there, Amelia, at your workplace, you're not just being Amelia and you are being a messenger. Of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I know it's not always the case, Amelia. We love you. Me too. But that's what we need to remember. Amen? As brother has shared the song, he knows that that music would not stop through here. The appreciation, but the lyrics and the message will pierce your heart and then you will realize what have I done with the second so what else? Remember, we have talked about this, that a shepherd, which is your pastors and your leaders, is actually, uh, their responsibility is to gather the sheep. It is that sheepfold, all right? I don't think the younger would understand what does that look like. But I remember growing up, this is a hard task. That we also talked about that Jesus being divine, and we are all just the branches. And that, that we are Family, sometimes we don't like it, we don't feel like it, but it makes us family because who unites us together is the spirit of Jesus Christ, amen? That we must learn how to live and work together. Amen. So these are just a few things. I, you know, all the stuff that you shared with me, these are just also a few things, a sign that our church is toward healthiness. Amen. And last, the quality of a church is greatly determined by the quality of its interpersonal relationship. Mm. Now listen, brothers and sisters, I do not doubt that you spend time with Jesus. I, I don't doubt it. I do not doubt as your pastor and your leader do you read the word. I do not doubt it. That you pray. When I see relationship around us are different and doesn't look like how the scripture says, that's when I begin to question. Now, question doesn't mean I doubt that there's something wrong. But what I'm saying that if we know that we are a healthy church, it should show between all of us and our relationship outside regardless of their circumstances, that they will see Jesus in that relationship. Amen? And through our series and the series that we'll be talking about, we have, we will be reminded of what, what Jesus faced. Jesus weren't faced with just people who wanted him. <laughs> right? I, I don't know about you. If you know the story of Jesus, there are some people that didn't want to see him. 
I was like, why are you here? Whoa, what are you doing? Why are you changing my life? And so these are the things that I'm super excited to tackle it, and we're focusing on the book of Philippians. So if you have your Bibles with you, read with me. It's in Philippians chapter 1, and I'm going to give us a couple of pointers. And um, How many of you have read the book of Philippians? Right? It's just simple. This is like a, a breeze. It's four chapters. It's nothing. But we're going to go back and just kind of get all the meat. And if you're, so my encouragement to you is to after today, um, read it, highlight it. Uh, if you have questions, we, we, we can have this group in the community and say, hey, what does that mean with this? And so, um, and I would encourage Pastor Daisy and Pastor Banya to be engaged in those things, whatever materials that we have. And so we can put that in the hands of our people to say, hey, this is what it meant. And so as we go together, uh, we are learning. We're not only uh, learning or commenting on what we've learned, but we're giving them tools so then they can actually share and pass it on to whether their families, their kids, their grandkids, right? So they can slowly begin to study with them. So that's the reason why we're doing it together. All right, verse 1 and 2. So we're going to go focus on that. It says here... Paul and Timothy, the servant of Christ Jesus, or bond servant in some translation, it says here, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including the overseers and the deacons, which is the leaders. Verse 2, it says, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a little bit of background of how and when did Paul write this. Any idea? Where Paul is writing this letter. Who says that? Loud, louder? Jail. There you go. He is in jail. prison. He's in jail. Now, putting that to context, here you are. Um, we have Paul writing to a church that has been uh, dear to his heart. But what I want us to focus on tonight is that. The reason why he's writing a letter is to also commend this church that in spite of the situation that he is out, they continue to become this sweet aroma of a church and a people that God wanted in their neighborhood. I'll tell you why. Now it says there that uh, Paul described us that Philippians were called saint. Now, how many of you feel like if I called you a saint? What is your honest, honest feedback? Even if you don't say it back to me, if I call you Maggie, you're such a saint. <laughs> is, is that a real answer? There you go. He, she's nodding. Away, right? Now listen. I love that answer because I would say the same. Right? I say, Pastor, oh my God, you're such a who. Hold on. Calm down with that, that comment, right? Could it be that you and I have been accustomed that when we talk about sin, the thing that we're thinking in our head is perfection and without sin? That's right. Amen? Amen? Where it is so clear that the scripture says that the meaning of saying are the ones who are set apart. Nothing to do with you being saint or righteous because you and I know who are righteous, right? Who is yes. the only righteous? So brothers and sisters, I, our first point is here. When Paul is saying that to the Philippian church, uh, that you guys are all saints, he's saying that you were set apart for a task. So I want you to erase this idea that saints is is leaning towards you and me being perfect and without sin. In fact, it is what it says in one of the commentaries. says, uh, a set-apart people are a holy building, for example. It isn't perfect, but it's a place set apart for a special use, like worship. So these are the things that sometimes if we're not careful, and we're saying this words and we don't correct some people's mindsets of what saint is all about. We, we could miss what is, is the plan uh, of God in our life. And so to be honest with you, when I look at it, I said, look, what's my problem with this state? And 
I realized that that's my thinking, that when we think of saint or being set apart, immediately we think of perfection. So second point, Philippians were saints because they were in Christ Jesus, and through their conversion and their love and knowledge of Jesus, they have been set apart. Amen? See, that's the key. Because of that conversion, your life and mine now has been sealed or been tucked in Jesus. So that's the idea that your relationship and, and our relationship with Jesus is so important. By the way, there are normal people, some whom are introduced. If you're who's quick and here, some open Acts 16, 13, 25. And then some open, and I want you to read it out loud. There are not a lot of verses. So I will probably have Daisy, uh, Pastor Daisy, open chapter 16 of Acts. So, so we can read and the scripture give a specific example that these are normal people that God has used mightily, right? And then somebody opens Acts chapter 16, same chapter, only reading verse 16 and 18. Amelia? And then Richie, can you read 29, same chapter, Acts chapter 16, verse 29 to 34. All right, let's begin with the first verses. Let's start with Daisy. Verse 13 and 15, chapter 16. Yeah. 13 and 15? Yes. 13 to 15. Yes. Okay, we just follow. On the Sabbath day, Amen. Look at that. When I was reading that, <coughs> Nidia, it's actually Lydia. <laughs> I think your name was getting it. So this woman is just listening to this preaching and the teaching, and yet God, what, what was the key there? She was what? Convicted. And from that conviction, this change began in our lives. So we're not going to go dive in and all that. I'm just saying that the very people that are serious enough to hear what God is saying, whether that in a local worship, you see it in the radios, are the ones that the Holy Spirit draw close to Him. Amen? Amen. And this is just one an example. We know that there's so many examples that God had used uh, in, in not only in Philippians but in the New Testament, well, pretty much in the Scripture, are normal people like you and me. Because I do not want, how many of you that in your life you realize you know what, I'm not going to be Sister Daisy or Sister Bonnie Jo or Pastor Kim said, because I'm just, I, I'm not like built that way. How many of you sometimes think that way? Or I don't speak good enough, or I don't know, I don't have a knowledge enough in the scripture. Sometimes we think that way. But that's not true. Amen? God uses ordinary people because he wants to showcase. Is it you? He wants to showcase who? He wants to Your life to a life changed by Jesus. Amen? So next, well, who is the next? Amelia, Amelia, verse, um, yeah, same chapter, 16, 16 and 18. 16 to 18. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul Can you imagine? Listen, 
Listen, you can be in a line. Well, I was I'm praying that you would not be in a line for coffee. <laughs> I'm telling you, I want to rebuke that person behind you. And you were like, huh, I rebuke us. Woman, I just want coffee, okay? A latte, oh, for crying out loud. But listen, all I'm saying, when God moves and convicted you to speak, you're speaking, right? Have you not seen the setup? They're doing their own business. Even the spirit recognized us. They were going and sharing God's word. Until that spirit, God says, Paul, it's that time. It's ready. Rebuke that spirit. It's about to come out on that, in her life. And look what happened. He stopped, turned around, and spoke the word. And what happened afterwards? He, she was released from that spirit. You know, brothers and sisters, man, there's just people in our lives that we just need to rebuke. Let me be honest. Let me be honest with you because I grew up in a who ba Baptist, and I this is not to say negative to them and stuff, but it wasn't a that experience. But when you look at the scripture, there is this constant discerning of what the spirit is doing, not what we're doing or our schedule, and we say, okay, cool, that's check, that's that's spiritual. But here we can literally they're doing their own business. They're traveling, they're sharing, and, and you know, whatever doors got it open, but at that moment, God is saying, I want to save that girl because she has been a slave for so many years. And that's why she was following. And so there are moments in our life that either us or those people around us that we need to pray for them. Amen? That we need to just really fight and stand in the gap of the the, the works of the enemy and then the works of Christ. Amen? Would that just give you a difference? You know, so we're, you're not just coming every Sunday to hear me. We're, we're on a we're in a war. So Saturday could be or Sunday could be just a reminder of who we are and identity, but when comes a Monday, you need to come show up. Because the Holy Spirit wants to use you and me. Because we're in a fight. Amen. All right, last verse, Richie, uh, verse 29 to 34. Okay. Um, and it's Acts 16, right? Chapter 16, verse 29 to 34. Okay. Then the jailer called for torches and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out of the inner prison, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, and entrust yourself to him, and you will be saved, you and your household, if they also believe. And then they spoke the word of the Lord concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ, to him, to all who were in his house. He took them that very hour of the night and washed their bloody wounds, and immediately he was baptized, he and all of his household. Then he brought them into his house, Amen. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? The guys, when when somebody invited you to have dinner, I'm just going to throw it out there, right? Please don't say, ah, I'm cleaning. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm not trying to throw on someone's, uh, <laughs> right? I, uh, yeah, I'm kind of tight right now. Um, I don't want to go. I'm not that. Listen, if God is convicting you in Jesus' name, here. Listen, sometimes you and I are so, I, I'm very particular, tight on our schedule. Amen? That, that like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I got, you know, busy, I got scheduled today, so maybe some other time. And not knowing that the Lord is opening doors for you and me. Now, I'm not saying it's all the time. But in this case, the Bible and Paul is saying that, wow, this People got saved because of that one saint who's saying, I am available to speak of God's word. Then what happens next is not less than miraculous because the person got saved and the family comes next. 
Guys, if we want our church to be healthy, these are the things that we continually need to focus on. Amen? We're here, our church, God still needs you. Amen? And he's using your life, the same, the set apart ones, to further his kingdom. We know it in the book of Acts. It wasn't the temple because they opened so much, many temples that everybody got saved. What was it? Everybody what? <laughs> went out. They went. They go. They were carrying God's love and forgiveness, God's word, his fellowship. And they depended on the Holy Spirit. That's when the church blew up. Thousands and thousands got saved. So always don't forget this, that the church needs you. He didn't need a pastor who can preach great stuff. No, he doesn't need the pastor who knows it all. No, he doesn't need a male or female pastor. He needs just an individual that loves Jesus. Amen? All right. Now, this is what I love, that he also needs leaders. Now, I'm not going to go into discussion whether leaders are made or they're born. I'm pushing that aside. All I know is this, because I know it in my heart and in my life. Leaders are servants. Amen? Because if we look Jesus, what did he do? He came down in his throne. He literally removed his godness and his glory so he can serve you and me. Amen? And this, this picture, he says, Paul. And we know Paul's uh, biography or here's his portfolio. It could be this thing because God has used him so much. Says that Paul referred to himself and Timothy as bond servants of Jesus, a fully constructed one. That's what we read. Because this is where they're coming from, that their perspective on leadership was dominated by the conviction. They provided leadership to others in the context of Jesus. Amen. Jesus serves people. By the way, if you want this material, I'm going to send it to you. It says here that, so as we grow our church, we definitely need leaders like you and me. Amen? It is not because we have a special something in us. No, we are all special. But God wants us to be available. Uh, in fact, I'm going to, this is not original. Uh, I says, I got to ask a question. If I'm okay, if I'm going to be working with other leaders, I'm super excited about it. I'm looking for those leaders who are bad. Okay, hold on. That's an acronym, okay? Uh, it may not be a religion, but I want that I want those people that are very faithful, available, and teachable. I'm not looking for special people. I'm looking for we can do that. We can make a shirt out of that. It's just fat, all right? And then put a period in there. So you know people would not think that you're just calling calling them out or something. No. Say it with me. We need leaders who are faithful, faithful available, available and most importantly, teachable. Amen? Because this is what the Lord Jesus has shown us. It says here that servanthood describes both the attitude and the actions. Healthy churches leaders make other people successful, sacrifice their interests for the church's best interests, and model humility. As we are carrying a brand and none of our charismatic attitude or our nice smiles or our resources can make it better. Amen? We, are, we carry a brand that sometimes is very scary, intimidating to some people. Do you believe that? Think about it, because if, if it is that easy, <laughs> You're seeing people running towards our churches and say, I want to be a servant of Jesus. <laughs> Have you seen that? One of these says, who wants to be a leader? Everybody will go the opposite way, right? Because they know what, what, do we, what it would require. It would require what? Patience, time, 
our resources, sacrifices, obedience, sometimes uh, pain, sometimes discipline. I got no time for that. That's what I would hear for some people. I just want to go focus my job and give to the church and say, hey, Pastor, I'm pretty sure you need an increase. So this, this, I'm giving more this month. No, we need people who will see that we have a gracious father came down from his glory to say, I want to empower you as people because I love you. Because I want to save those people that haven't heard, heard about me yet. Amen? So what do we need if our church to be healthy first? We need people who are <coughs> saints. Not perfect. What is saint? Set apart. So that means today as you're listening you are here, not by accident. You are here because God has set you apart yeah. for a task. Tell you what, if you don't know it yet, it's okay. We will figure it out and we will help you through the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. And we don't need leaders who are very good and stuff. What do we need? We need what? Servant leaders. Amen. We want people who would go above and Listen, this is, this. Is, by the way, we're just touching the surface of the book of Philippians. I cannot wait for, for uh, the, how you start reading in and the things that God would remind you and the, how he touched you through that book. But we're going to go through some serious stuff that I think um, churches have not kind of go back and talk about. Because we want to, uh, brothers and sisters, I don't, I don't want to stand here and just kind of tickle you. some truth and he says these are truths that we see in ourselves and sometimes we will not like it but it's okay because that's how God wants to mold us and sometimes when, when the master tries to mold you it's not easy right it's like sometimes it's a little bit painful and sometimes it, it requires you trusting the master you know especially when I'm in a to just remove some branches stuff in your life. I'm pretty sure it's painful when you when you told us the story. You love this brothers and you this man. But God says, no, 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 I said you are part and you need to be out of there for now. And I will bring you back in his time. Amen? These are the people, how many of us are sitting here that we just cannot let go of some of those things. But be ready. Amen? God will remove those and it's okay because it is for you is the last part that we have. We we preach so much that how, when in Ephesians chapter it says that we are saved by grace, grace and not by but <laughs> okay, ignore that. We will remove that. <laughs> we love you, Pastor. I don't know. So we are saved by grace, not by works, right? I know where you're coming from. I get it. I get it. But have you now realized that this is the same thing that God wants you and I to go back and to give it to the very people that is close to you? Have you thought about that? Sometimes you are very ungrate gracious to your spouse. Don't touch the, the camera as you're moving it, Mom. Mama. Mama. <laughs> listen, let's, listen, listen. I told you we're just touching the surface, right? We can speak all the, oh, be gracious because God says, well, tell you what, this is what God says. Be gracious to your husband. Ooh. He may not do the things that you want him to do, but still be gracious and be loving. Amen. He may suck on a lot of things, but God says you're the woman I picked for him. The same thing with the man. What if he, she doesn't follow you to where you feel like God is bringing you and God says, no, you have to be patient. You have to wait for her. Well, well God, like she doesn't want to follow me, so I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> Listen, this is the truth that you and I read. And yet, when we give to other people, especially to the ones that's closer to you, Boy, we feel like we own it. Amen? 
We feel like you own the grace. Amen. We feel like you own the forgiveness. You feel like you're the one that died on that, that cover and that cross, stretch out, bleeding, gasping for breath. You think that you have the right to say no, who to give it to, and not to give it to. Brothers and sisters, when I look at this, wow, Lord, you're showing us how mighty grace and loving and peaceful you are. Because even to this day, right at this moment, at 736, you know that God is being gracious to you. Amen. Because he has been trust me fully to give your life all the gifts that you have all the, the the time that you are and yet we're still giving a little bit you see when all these things are said and done it's good to hear but what God is really saying in order for us to be a church then all these things need to be given this needs to be released even if you feel like they don't deserve it, God says, yes, they do. Amen. Lord, they don't, know, they don't deserve the love that, that I can give them. I say, oh, hold on. Yes, they do. They, they don't deserve the attention of my presence there because, no, 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 they do. Amen? So this is the thing. So when we look at what God has done for us, may you remember that the grace and peace Grace and peace are extended person to person. Paul and Timothy and to all the saints. Amen? Amen? So this is what it looks like for our healthy church to thrive. And for people to be attracted to not our activities but a person who is gracious, who is faithful. I'm going to it's a little confession. Like a guy says, now nah, you're gonna have to share this. I, that, this is bad, but I remember I'm this is not long. Now I'm talking about a couple of years back. <laughs> My wife knows that I have a little aggression from time to time coming out, especially driving. That's why I'm not I love New York, but I don't I don't fit in New York City. <laughs> so I look, God took me out of there. I love you way too much, I think. So that's not good, right? And I was young, but I didn't realize that as I become a pastor, God has grown me. God has rebuilt me something that um, that I realized that I'm done with it. That that aggression and that that you know when I look at people and they don't feel like they're serving, I would react right a certain way. And I'm being honest with you: if somebody cut me off, <laughs> yes, that road raise is gonna be coming out pretty soon and to the point. Now, you know exactly what that looked like, right? <laughs> Some of y'all probably have them too and done it. Amen? But after I've done that many times, anything, my wife was patient to me. Right? Patient and gracious, gracious to me. Until one time, I said, Sister Betty, that's got to be something we need to give to Jesus. Because I would try to, 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 to stop it and remind me. I would hold my hand in the wheel so I don't have to give them the love. It's like a real New Yorker. And sometimes I'll put the windows out and say, whoa, I'm like, who are you? That's why I don't put stickers on money that I love Jesus and stuff. So be very careful with those things. And be like, what? That's a Christian? And can you imagine me putting, I am a pastor? I'm like, yeah. And then one day, ah. But she was gracious and, and she didn't, you know, judge me for it. She just knew. I remember beginning to seek and I said, Lord, this is not your, the person that you are. It's not about, about the circumstances. And I know that's just a, a little thing as compared to. But then I realized that is root, rooted on so many issues and emotional stuff in my life. You know? And then now I'm driving in peace. <laughs> I'm not like 
just want to make sure my wife is listening. I mean, I think I'm doing great. Amen? I'm, I see you go. But before, I would like tail them and follow them. And I'm like, oh. That's, but I realized that, that that little thing is so much tied in with, 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 with that attitude and character God is changing in my life. And until I let go of those little things. So I'm sharing that to you because there are things in our life that we may think is so miniature and so tiny. But you do not realize that that is the one thing that is separating you and me to become extraordinary. Amen? God wants to
filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Here you are. Paul was writing to the people of Corinthians that what they're doing is such a sweet aroma to the community around them. Is that good to know? Amen. That where God has placed you and me, he says, that community should not worry because they see us in that community. This nation not worry because Richie is there serving and nobody knows who he is. It's a bold move to move, but there's a reason that Brother Dave is here. Because now it's not about just his family, but now it's a spiritual power that God is using. Maggie wasn't an accident that you're still here after all the things that happened. The Lydia, very close to Lydia. God wants you to trust him completely. See, all the things that we know, all the things that happens to us, God is showcasing and telling the world that these are the ordinary people that I can use and I can do it to you. Amen? And so that's my prayer to you. This letter is a simple as it is. It's showing to us the Good evening, guys. I know we have a lot of bread. No more. No more. Oh, no more bread, my bad. <laughs>